Okay, welcome back to our show and tell section on the blood vessels. Okay, and right now we're going to finish up the last half of the section by discussing the veins. Okay, so all of the veins in our systemic circuit. And if we start here at the heart again, okay, we see that the veins that go into our um, right atrium our, are our superior vena cava. Okay, and then if we look at the very bottom of the heart, we see that there's this hole here. And that's where the inferior vena cava comes up and empties into the right atrium. Okay, so the superior vena cava has these two major branches. Okay, these are our brachiocephalic veins. So our left brachiocephalic vein and our right brachiocephalic vein. If we look at the back of the superior vena cava, we see this little nub right here. And that's where a vein called the azygos vein comes up from the lower back area, okay, and brings blood back up to dump it into the superior vena cava. Okay, so if we look at this on a larger model, we can see where those brachiocephalic veins go. Okay, so our heart would be right here. Okay, our superior vena cava comes up out of the right atrium, and it has two major branches. Okay, this is our right brachiocephalic vein. This is our left brachiocephalic vein. Okay, notice that the right one's a lot shorter. Okay, that's just because this vessel's coming from, from the right side of the body. Okay, so it, the, the left brachiocephalic vein has further to go to get over to this side of the neck. Okay, so the right brachiocephalic vein branches off into two major vessels. Okay, we have this vessel that goes at the side of the neck. That's the internal jugular vein. Okay, then we have this vessel that comes over in this direction. That's the subclavian vein. Okay, beneath the clavicle, subclavian. We have the same branches if we look over here on the left side. Okay, so we have our left brachiocephalic vein, then we have our left internal jugular vein, and our left subclavian vein underneath the clavicle, which would sit right here. Okay, so the subclavian vein goes until just past the first rib. Okay, here are our ribs. So at just past the first rib, the subclavian vein becomes the axillary vein. Okay, just like with our arteries. So let's look at this model for that. Okay, here we see our heart. Okay, we have our superior vena cava. Down from the bottom, our inferior vena cava. The superior vena cava has two major branches. Okay, the right brachiocephalic vein, the left brachiocephalic vein. Those branch into our internal jugular veins, going up the neck, okay? And our subclavian veins, okay, extending out underneath the clavicle. Past, here's the first rib, so right past the first rib, we said the subclavian vein turns into the axillary vein, okay? Then the ax from the axillary vein, we have these two major veins that go down either side of the arm, okay? We have one that goes down the arm from the top of the arm to the bottom of the arm, okay, on the pinky side, and one that goes from the top to the bottom on the thumb side, okay? So, if we follow on the pinky side, we'll go from about right here, okay, and we'll follow it all the way down, on the pinky side, okay? That's the basilic vein, okay, basilic. If we come up here, okay, and we follow this vein all the way down on the thumb side, we'll notice that it comes in a little bit right here and then goes back out again on the thumb side. That's the cephalic vein, cephalic. Okay, so it comes down, goes in a little bit, and then out. Cephalic vein on thumb side, basilic vein on the pinky side. 
Then right here at the inner elbow, we have this anastomosis, okay, or this connector that goes right here, okay, from the basilic to the cephalic. That's called the median cubital vein. Median cubital vein. Okay, that's that one right here that they typically get blood from, okay, when they need to draw blood. Okay? So we also, we do have a brachial vein, a radial vein, an ulnar vein, okay, just like the arteries, but they're not represented well on here, okay? So I'm gonna stick with the ones that are actually shown well. If we look at this arm model here, okay, again, remember it, it sits like this, okay? So this right here, this first blue vessel is in the, the axilla, the underarm. So that's the axillary vein, okay, the axillary vein. And if we turn this arm this way, okay, we can see this vessel here, if we follow it down, Okay, this is the one that comes in a little bit and then keeps going out and that goes down to the thumb. So remember the thumb side is the cephalic vein. Okay, so then if we go from the axillary and we follow down on this side, okay, we follow all the way down to the pinky. That's the basilic vein. So then if we look at the inner elbow, we see our cephalic is here, our basilic is here. Okay, we have this vessel right here that connects the two. Okay, that's our median cubital vein. Okay, median cubital. So from there, we'll head down into the abdominal pelvic cavity. Okay? So remember from the bottom of the heart heading down, we have our inferior vena cava, okay? Our inferior vena cava. This is really, really large vessel that goes down next to the abdominal aorta, okay? It also has many branches in the abdomen. We have the hepatic veins that come over here to the liver, okay? Then coming down a little bit further, we have these renal veins, so the right renal vein going to the kidney on the right, the left renal vein going to the kidney on the left. Okay, still the inferior vena cava that progresses down. Okay, then the inferior vena cava splits into the common iliac vein. Common iliac vein, so the left common iliac vein, the right common iliac vein. Okay, the common iliac vein splits into the external iliac vein going down towards the leg and the internal iliac vein you can barely see it here which goes deep down into the pelvis okay there's actually a few more vessels that aren't actually shown on that model so let's look here okay hopefully you can see this so this is showing us our inferior vena cava okay um, we can't see the hepatic vein, it's not shown here, um, but we can see our renal veins going to our kidneys. Okay, and the other vessels that we can see on this model are our gonadal veins. Okay, remember the gonadal veins are these really thin little ones that go down on either side of the abdomen. Okay, it's interesting to know though that the right gonadal vein comes up to the vena cava. Okay, but the left gonadal vein actually originates from the left renal vein. Okay, it connects to the left renal vein instead of the vena cava. And that's just because the vena cava sits on the right side of the body. Okay, so the, the gonadal vein would have to travel further to, and cross over the aorta in order to get to the inferior vena cava. So it's easier for that gonadal vein to just come up here and drain into the renal vein, and then the renal vein drains into the vena cava. Okay? Again, from the bottom of the inferior vena cava, we split into the right common iliac vein and the left common iliac vein. Okay, the common iliac veins split into the external iliac vein, and then the internal iliac vein that goes down deep into the pelvis. Okay? This external iliac vein, once it punches through the abdominal wall, 
Okay, it becomes the femoral vein. Okay, the femoral vein. And we can't really see the femoral vein in a lot of our models. Okay, but the femoral vein is gonna go wrap around the femur. Okay, and then just like the femoral artery did, okay, it'll wrap, over, whoop, it'll wrap around the femur, and then at the back of the knee, it'll become the popliteal vein, okay? So let's look at this model real quick. And if we look here, we had our common iliac vein, and it splits into the internal iliac vein and the external iliac vein. Once the external iliac vein goes through the abdominal wall, it becomes the femoral vein. And we just see this femoral vein right here. We just see the very beginning of it, okay? Then we see that it, it would continue down and this would be the rest of it right here. The femoral vein kind of comes down here okay, and wraps around the back of the femur. And then we can't see it anymore in this model, okay? We do see this other very large vein right here. It starts up here in the upper leg and it goes down the medial or the inner thigh, okay, continues all the way down the leg. This is a very superficial vein, okay? This is called the great saphenous vein, okay? The great saphenous vein, all the way down, okay? So let's just look at the leg model real quick because we can see the femoral and popliteal on it. Okay, so if we look at this right here, we're looking at the blue vessels that's up, that are up here. Okay, remember this is the pelvis. Okay, so we haven't crossed down into the leg yet. Okay, so that's our external iliac vein. Once it breaks through that abdominal wall, okay, it becomes the femoral vein. Okay, so the femoral vein continues down here and then it starts to go towards the back. It wraps around the back of the femur. And we can see it come out right here. Okay, so the femoral vein comes down, and then here at the back of the knee, it's the popliteal vein. Okay, and then we also have a, a posterior tibial, anterior tibial, but we don't have those shown on any of these models. Okay, so that's it for the veins. Okay, except for the veins that are involved in our hepatic portal circulation. Okay, and if the hepatic portal circulation is, involves the veins that take nutrient-rich blood from the intestines, okay, and then they send it through a portal vein to the liver so that we can process those nutrients. Okay, so we'll talk about hepatic portal circulation in the next video. Okay, because it's a very special subset of vessels that are involved. Again, please post any questions and thank you for your attention.